I'm Laurie Thomas with the University of Kentucky Forestry and Natural Resources Extension, and I'm here with the tree of the week, the green ash. Green ash, Fraxinus pennsylvanica, is the most widely distributed ash in North America. It is a member of the Oleaceae, or olive family, which is made up of about 500 to 600 species of trees and shrubs. The two genera, Fraxinus and Olea, are noted for their fine timber that they produce. Green ash is also known as red ash, swamp ash, and water ash, and it can be confused with white, black, and pumpkin ash in the field. It is a medium-sized deciduous tree that typically has a rounded to slightly irregular crown. Trees usually grow 50 to 70 feet tall and up to 24 inches in diameter, but on good sites in the southern part of their range, they can grow up to 120 feet tall and up to 30 inches in diameter. It is a moderately fast-growing tree with an attractive form and it is tolerant of an array of sites. This tolerance has led to it being popular as an urban shade tree or ornamental. However, with the introduction of the emerald ash borer, which has affected the ashes throughout their range, most ash, ash species are no longer recommended for landscape planting. The wood is durable and similar to white ash, and it's an important wildlife tree both as a larval host and for its large seed crops. Green ash is found from Nova Scotia to Alberta, Canada, west to Montana and Wyoming, and south to Texas and Florida. It is found throughout Kentucky, but it's not as common as white ash. Green ash grows best on fertile, moist, well-drained soils, but it can also grow in a range of sites from clay to sandy soils with varying degrees of moisture. It is considered a bottomland species that is found growing with sweet gum, cottonwood, willows, red maple, and bottomland oaks and hickories. It is one of the most adaptable of all the ashes and it can grow on a range of sites. Green ash is considered intermediate in shade tolerance. Green ash is a deciduous tree with oppositely arranged pinnately compound leaves. It is one of the four groups of trees in Kentucky that has oppositely arranged leaves, the maples, ashes, dogwoods, and buckeyes. So if you can remember the mnemonic mad buck, then you can remember the tree with the trees with oppositely arranged leaves in Kentucky. The leaves are usually six to nine inches long and composed of seven to nine serrated lance shaped leaflets. The leaflets are green above and glabrous to silky pubescent below. Autumn color is typically yellow and most attractive. This species is typically dioecious with male flowers and female flowers on separate trees. The male flowers are in tight clusters and the female flowers are in loose panicles and both tend to be a light purple in color. The flowers bloom as the leaves unfold in spring and the flowers are wind pollinated. And trees usually begin flower production when the trees reach 3 to 4 inches in diameter and up to about 20 to 25 feet tall. The fruit of green ash is a single winged Samara. The Samara is flat with a slender, thin seed cavity. The Samaras are born in clusters. The fruit ripens in the fall and will generally drop as soon as they ripen. Most of the seeds are wind dispersed, but some may also be dispersed by water. The seeds will germinate in the following spring, or they may lie dormant in the leaf litter for several years. Many ash trees are known for exhibiting masting behavior, where they produce very abundant seed crops every five years, while others produce good seed crops every year. Green, also, green ash also regenerates from stump sprouts. The bark is gray to brown in color and has ridges that interlace to form diamonds. On older trees, the bark may become somewhat scaly. The bark looks similar to white ash, but the furrows are not as deep. The wood of green ash is hard, strong, and has excellent shock resistance. The heartwood is light to medium brown in color, and the sapwood can be very wide and tends to be beige or light brown. And there's not always a clear or sharp demarcation between the heartwood and sapwood. The wood is rated as perishable in regards to decay, and it's not resistant to insect attack. Because the wood is hard and has excellent shock resistance, it's commonly used for tool handles, particularly shovels and hammers. The wood is also used for furniture, flooring, and cabinetry. Ash trees, including green ash, are an important wildlife tree, particularly in the northern Great Plains. They provide food and cover for a variety of birds such as wood duck, sharp-tailed grouse, bobwhite, turkey, blackbirds, finches, grosbeaks, flycatchers, warblers, and cardinals. 
This species is also very beneficial for mammals, including cottontail rabbits, white-tailed jackrabbits, deer, American beaver, and bison. Green ash is also the larval host for the tiger swallowtail, ash, waved sphinx, sphinx mosses, and the polyphemus moth. One of the most destructive insect pests of ash is the emerald ash borer, or EAB. This in invasive insect pest has caused great mortality in North America to our ash trees. It was introduced from Asia and was first detected in North America in Michigan around 2002. By 2009, it was detected in Kentucky and has since then continued to spread across the state. The national champion green ash as of 2022 is in Hartford, Connecticut, and it's 245 inches in circumference, 82 feet tall, with a 90-foot crown spread. And as of 2022, there is currently not a champion green ash in Kentucky. If you'd like to know more about um, champion trees, check out American Forest National Champion Trees, or check out the Kentucky Division of Forestry Champion Trees. Now for a few fun facts about green ash. Green ash is one of the five Fraxinus species found in Kentucky, according to Wharton and Barber. Many wooden canoe paddles and oars are made from green ash wood. The wood was used to, for split rail fencing and for stoking wood burning engines all along the Mississippi Valley. The scientific genus named Fraxinus is from the Latin name for the ash tree, and Pennsylvanica means from Pennsylvania. Thanks for joining me to learn about this native ash, and I hope you get the opportunity to get out into your woodland, local park, and neighborhood and enjoy the green ash.